Howdy, partner. Bill Gallagher, a.k.a. Thraben Yu here, for an exclusive preview card from Outlaws at Thunder Junction. Now, I know today is April Fool's Day, but there's no fooling here. Also, I have not been bribed to offer this exclusive preview card. This one's on the house. And thank you to Diana D'Amico and everyone else at Wizards of the Coast for giving me this opportunity. I know many of you might have come west in hopes of gold and treasure and fortune, and mayhaps along the way you found that you needed to commit a crime or two. And maybe you need a fall guy. You don't want to be the one to take the damage from your crimes. So, maybe you need yourself a pariah. This is a sweet aura that has been used throughout Magic's history to redirect damage elsewhere. This is an enchantment aura for three mana, and all damage that would be dealt to you is dealt to enchanted creature instead. And the flavor text here absolutely cracks me up. Hellspurs announce job opening, as this person is about to just be absolutely riddled with various pieces of ammunition. So let's say that you crack one of these in one of your packs. What is it that you are going to actually do with your copies of Pariah? Well, I have some thoughts for you. I think when most people first see Pariah, their thought is going to be something along the lines of worship, where you are just using this as something that prevents you from losing the game to, you know, one big alpha strike or something like that. But it can actually be a lot more sinister than just that. I have really enjoyed Pariah on indestructible creatures, and specifically I really like putting it on either Stuffy Doll or Brash Taunter, because both of these creatures are indestructible, meaning that Pariah is basically around forever, and it starts turning these into actual win conditions, because the damage that would be dealt to you is dealt to Brash Taunter or Stuffy Doll, and then those creatures trigger, allowing you to deal damage to your opponents. So this is kind of a sweet combo, but probably ultimately finds its home in EDH tables and things of that nature, as these two cards that I've just talked about cost 5 mana. But if you can make a creature indestructible for less, or you play sort of a less impressive indestructible creature, you can maybe make it work. Unfortunately, many of the low-cost indestructible creatures kind of look like this, so it's going to be a little bit dubious. If you end up doing anything cool with Pariah, or if you have any cool tournament stories from the past with Pariah, throw them down in the comments below. I would love to hear them. Pariah is great when you need something just a little bit stronger than Ward 3 to protect yourself. With that being said, let's go ahead and launch into my normal daily video now. All right, let's keep the deck tech today relatively short. David has asked us to play with Metalworker today. And Metalworker historically has powered out all sorts of busted artifacts. And this deck is kind of conceptually going to look like a deck from maybe about 10 years ago. Uh, we're throwing it back to kind of classic mud, where the goal is to play Metalworker and accelerate into things like Koldoltha Forge Master which can then get us a Blight Steel Colossus for an Infect Kill, uh, kind of pseudo uncounterably in many cases, as both of these creatures are Construct, so we can kind of just go Cavernous Souls into Metalworker, Cavernous Souls into Forge Master, and go. Lightning Greaves in this deck list can go and make our Forge Master hasty, followed by making Blight Steel Colossus hasty afterwards. And Grim Monolith is kind of going to be our backup metal worker. And our Manifold Keys and Voltaic Keys can both be used to kind of really ramp up the mana acceleration. I made two primary changes from David's initial list. I wanted to keep the spirit of the metal worker mud here. But the initial list had a whopping 26 lands and Karns, and I didn't really like either one of those things. 26 just felt like too many. I wanted more Lotus Petals and Mox Opals to kind of make the beginning of the game more impactful. And I think the original deck had like two copies of the One Ring and like Karn to wish for them. But I really want to lean into making Manifold Keys and Voltaic Keys good. 
because like once you start popping off with like metal workers and untaps and the one ring and untaps like if we have effectively infinite mana and effectively infinite card draw like we we can do cool things from there and i've added some paradox engines into this deck this is a card that really has impressed me and i want to be able to untap my metal workers and untap my one rings and go hard the changes that i've made do come at the cost of some things like trinosphere and tangle wire in the main deck but i've been pretty mid on tangle wire the last couple of times that i've played it anyway and combo is relatively uncommon in the current meta game outside of like a hybrid combo deck like the blue black scaminator deck backup plans for this deck include just you know doing the urza saga thing or making a very large amount of mana and just casting a walking ballista that kills our opponent um that's always something that just feels good for the post sideboard games, we're focusing on graveyard based hate here, ways to stop counter spells, and ways to stop opposing combo decks. Uh, just kind of very focused sideboard, and we'll see how good Mud is feeling in today's metagame. Now, if you find that you need some sweet artifacts or maybe some copies of Pariah, eh? Eh? Check out toamagic.com, that's Tales of Adventures. They support me and many other content creators, and if you use my promo code THRABENU, you'll get 5% on your order, in addition to free shipping and great customer service. That being said, let's battle. Uh, how hard does this pop off? And is it correct to try and pop off? Correct to even keep the hand. It's like, I have Metalworker... I think I'm going to keep the hand, but I think this is like an Urza Saga first sort of hand. And the Metalworker stuff ends up coming later on, probably after I make the second Urza Saga construct token. I think I am just going to play this right now. It works against the Urza Saga plan a little bit, but I think I just want to put playable artifacts into play before my opponent can start like dazing and griefing and stuff one ring got it uh so if i make an urza saga construct token i have one mana that i can't really do anything with so we'll call it a turn there all right good it's not in tomb i think i beat most of the fair underground sea things that can happen and lose to a lot of the unfair underground sea things that can happen like, I'm much more scared of, say, Doomsday or Storm right now than I am, you know, just Grief and Marktide Regent. We're in Grixis. Okay, that's fine. Sure. We can do something like a Shadow Spear. Potentially make those bodies less relevant. Uh, my creatures are already going to be huge. Oh, fantastic. So let's do this. I think I'm probably going to cast a Lightning Greaves this turn. Let's, let's put this in play. I think it's okay to lose this card. It, it just is such an absurd amount of damage and mana if this works. Like five additional damage this turn is huge. Not this time. All right. We get countered. I'll bash in for five. I've got my opponent dead in two combat steps, and I have the life gain myself to make it so that I am unlikely to die on the backswing. No Delver flip. Opponent had a guaranteed flip in the form of their daze and did not accept it for sure. Opponent's got a 6-6 six, six Merktide. I will outscale that very quickly. I also have a way to make my stuff unblockable on board. Grim Monolith, that is a great draw. We'll go ahead and cast that. It is a new daze. You got it. So I don't want to attack into the Merktide Regent then. We are playing this because we could increase our artifact count by multiple numbers and then have safe attacks in. My opponent doesn't really have a safe Merktide Regent attack. Delver flips to Brainstorm. So what does my opponent want to find? Any removal that they have is great. Alternatively, if they can set things up so that they can attack for 12 this turn, they potentially win the race. 
I don't know if I re resolve like any spell, they don't win the race. This Shadow Spear that's sitting on board is probably a pain for my opponent. Alright, I'll take some damage. My opponent's trying to hold this back in hopes that I can only attack with one construct next turn. Cavern of Souls. Sure. I'm just going to go ahead and float mana here. I can just get uh, a Lotus Petal, I think. Let's get this. I will put it on Construct. I can go 1, 2, 3, play a Metal Worker, and then I have a pair of 7-7s. Seven it is unclear to me that that is just better than equipping this Construct and attacking in for 7. It probably is. It just opens up next turn so much. Opponent only has two card types in Graveyard as well. My opponent, Force of Wills. This could be a Desperation Surveil, or this could just be a terrible mistake. All right, I'll crash in with both. <laughs> All right, they just throw in the towel. Yeah, that was a Desperation Surveil. All right, so the stuff at the higher end of the curve here is pretty rough versus Days. I think conceptually I like Defense Grid a lot. Dismember is not bad. So do I just like not Paradox Engine? If I don't Paradox Engine, that gets this stuff in. Walking Ballistas definitely become worse without access to Paradox Engine. I can still treat this as a 2 mana removal spell for a 1-1 one -one creature though, which is like perfectly fine. Is Forge Mastering for Worm Coil enough? Sometimes. Maybe I hope that's enough. I do something like this. Get some Dismembers in. Oh, I just don't want expensive things. I'm going to keep a Forge Master as a tutor for Worm Coil and hope that this is okay. i probably keep this hand. It's slightly unclear to me how YOLO I play this hand. All right, they are bobbling themselves to see whether or not they want to fetch immediately. And they do. And do a Thundering Falls for some bonus selection. I can sacrifice Crystal Vein on turn one to, like, do some Grim Monolith shenanigans, but it maybe is not really necessary to do that when I can accomplish similar things by just playing cards the next turn down the line. Uh, let's just cast this so my stuff isn't Dazable. I guess I'll put this one into play. And we'll call it a turn there. And now that I have a Voltaic Key, a Grim Monolith is much scarier. Sure. I would love to draw a new land here, but I didn't. So what I'm about to do is, like, a game-defining moment. I think if this Grim Monolith doesn't resolve, I'm very likely to lose this game. Hot damn, it did work. Okay. So we'll now untap our Grim Monolith. We've got two mana. I'll use that to play a Grim Monolith. I've got three mana. I'll use that to play a Voltaic Key. We're popping off. Untap a Grim Monolith. Four mana. I think at this point I'll play the One Ring. Nice. Draw a card. Lodestone Golem. Three mana. Play Manifold Key. Untap, I think, a Grim Monolith. Four mana. Grim Monolith. Or, sorry, Lodestone Golem. Everything just worked. That's, uh, that's real good for me. Uh, Wasteland's great. Wasteland takes me off. What are you doing? Why are you not Wastelanding this? It is so incredible to Wasteland this and keep me from untapping all of my various things that do stuff. All right. I think before I do anything else here, I'm just going to punch my opponent in the face for five. Send it. Okay. You got it. Let's draw some cards. All right. Untap a monolith. Three mana. Untap a monolith. I think manifold key untaps the one ring. Draw three cards. Mox opal. We'll Manifold Key. I'll make some more mana immediately. Use that mana to Manifold Key. Manifold Key untaps the One Ring, which now draws four cards. I get a Lotus Petal. What I have 
three mana, four mana, five mana. So I think I'm going to go ahead. Well, actually, I guess I make my mana cast Defense Grid and then make my Urza Saga Construct token, which I imagine will kill my opponent in one hit next turn. An opponent does not have some crazy level meltdown type card, so we win. Today's video is sponsored by Voxfield.com, and honestly, they're just the best at what they do. If you need to keep your deck lists online, this is the way to do it. They have all sorts of different viewing options. You can condense that text if you like things to be tight. You can make them visual grids. You can put them in stacks. You've got all sorts of different ways to kind of view and visualize your deck lists. And they also have some really cool functionality, like allowing you to see playtest hands and even fully playtest your decks. So check them out. All right, what am I looking at here? I'm looking at a pile of mana and nothing to do. So I think I would like to find something to do. I have one mana, two mana, three mana. Fourth mana gets me to the one ring with the ability to Voltaic Key and untap it. My deck is a lot of mana. I think I'm going to keep this one and hope that it works out rather than go deeper. Um, not entirely sure that that's correct. Uh, ooh. It is not going to feel great versus a turn one threat, that's for sure. That's not what I want to see. We'll put this on Golem for later, and then play out some spells that don't do a lot yet. All right, they all resolve. So now my opponent can bobble themselves to increase the chances that their Delver flips. Okay. It flips revealing Force of Will, uh, which will counter my first copy of the One Ring. No. Um, obviously not what I want to see. Now I'm hoping to draw like an Ancient Tomb or a City of Traders. I am the greatest magician of all time. I know that my opponent has Force of Will. I have two copies of the One Ring. I think I jam this first. What? All right, like there better be a Bowmaster coming down that punishes the ever-loving fuck out of me. Otherwise, I call like Poppycock. Sure, sure. No Bowmasters. What? Oh, no, 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 no. That one was fine. That one was fine. That was that was the protection. Sorry. Um. Yeah. So, uh, this is good. I could take as much as six damage next turn. I guess let's draw while the drawing is good. Paradox Engine. Sweet. I think I'm just going to untap this and draw again and hope to draw a little bit more artifact mana. Uh, this card's insane. Will my opponent counter it? Unsure. Let's find out. Nope. Three mana. Manifold key. Is there no blue card over there? Untap Grim Monolith. New manifold key. Three mana. On top this. How do, I, how do I do this turn from here? I think I just cast a new copy of the One Ring. Get protection from everything. Keep this one. Take a redraw. Forge Master. Okay, this is all fine. I'm, I'm just so incredibly confused. Like, I, I got so much out of my last turn cycle because my opponent let the One Ring resolve. Uh, sure, that's fine. Alright, I lose a life. Did not want to draw that. It's probably fine. I am fine playing this as my land for turn. As long as I don't die next turn, I just have Shadow Spear. So let's start here. Untap Grim Monolith and start doing some crimes. So this is up to five mana. I think I'm interested in lodestone golem immediately now my opponent can't brainstorm to put a force of will on top of library which is a thing that i potentially care about let's untap grim monolith and again we are just trying to stay alive until i get shadow spear all right my opponent is done so they are just a slightly bigger than normal delver deck what did we do last time? Defense grids in, a couple dismembers in, and a lot of the top end out. I think it was like one, two, three, four, five, six for these. 
I could have been more aggressive with trying to resolve Paradox Engine and effectively comboing off, but it didn't look like I actually needed to do that. This is a very all-in hand, where if what I'm doing works, it's very strong. It's just City into Grim Monolith, into Voltaic Key, into like Metalworker. There's an Opal in there as well, the One Ring. I think some portion of the time, like, I'm just going to eat it to a daze and it kind of sucks, but... Oh, yeah, okay, let's take a different approach to this game. Let's now make my opponent have a wasteland for this Urza Saga, otherwise Urza Saga runs away with the game, and if they do wasteland me, then this City of Traders is not getting wastelanded, which is a boon. Uh, sure. So we'll play a Mox Opal, and attempt a Grim Monolith. It is so good if it resolves. It is dazeable. Uh, 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 nope. Um, hopefully I can just battle worker next turn and then run away with the game. I will need either a castable, oh, lightning bolt for metal worker, daggers, not interaction. Okay, cool. So I can cast this metal worker and then it just gets lightning bolted. I don't think I do anything on my turn. I think playing metal worker and losing city of traders is worse than making no play it's just sort of an unfortunate situation but I, I i don't want to make it worse sure 14 oh no there's more the second creature here is pretty rough the mox opal that does not actually increase my metal craft count is daggers so if i take six this turn and go to eight then i'm actually dead to lightning bolt the following turn Instant artifact land in there, so a ponder could put my opponent over the top. Blah. Yeah, no, that's that that's fine. That's fine. Uh, we've got a game three for a reason. I don't think I'm gonna change things. Play versus draw here. All right, what am I looking at? I think a reasonable hand. Like this hand is going to top deck very well, and I can get a shadow spear in play under a daze which is kind of a big deal. Like, an Urza Saga is an insane top deck. A Grim Monolith is great. A Metal Worker is great. Any other card that costs four or more is great. I, I think this is fine. Basically, my bricks are non-Urza Saga lands. And, you know, there's still a decent amount of those, but we're drawing very, very, very live here. Yeah, that's fantastic. I get wastelanded. What do I want to get wastelanded? The cavern or the ancient tomb? I think the cavern. I want to cavern into ancient tomb. We're just going to kind of slow roll it for a second, make it look like we're thinking about what creature type we want a name. Then I'll go ahead and drop a voltaic key and call it a turn. So in theory, now we're going to be able to do an uncounterable lodestone golem into the one ring. And that feels great. And if my opponent uses any mana on their turn, they can't just, like, immediately lightning bolt the lodestone golem. Fetch land will mean that I'm taking three instantly. Yeah, there we go. That's what my opponent wants to see. I'm at 17. We'll see if they have another creature. They do. That's what they want. So this will be 15 on my end. And this is uncounterable. My opponent has fetched, so the delver flip is totally random here. Uh, sure. The Surveil is great. Delver flips to Portent. Got it. Makes sense with the counterbalance nonsense. All right. This is absolutely a please don't force a will me moment. Let's draw a card. Am I drawing more cards? Or am I dismembering? I dismember. I still have to pay the life, I believe, even though I have protection from everything. It prevents damage, not loss of life, I believe. I dismember. I go to three. Go to two from the one ring. Feels almost like I just need to play another copy of the one ring. Or start popping off combo wise rather than trying to just answer these. So let's dig deeper here. Draw two. I guess Walking Ballista plus Dismember will answer stuff. I need like a Grim Monolith to kind of round things out here. I have Worm Coil Engine potential coming. 
I think I'm just going to end up being a little bit too slow, though. Might get punished for putting Dismember in this deck rather than something like Spatial Contortion. Alright, they liked what they found. They left a Delver back? Oh, no, sorry, that has to attack for protection. Yep. Alright, so my opponent draws their card. I lose two. I'm at five. So this is Theoretical Lethal. Crystal Veins, not the worst. I guess let's do this thing. Sure. So we'll Opal. Opal is black mana. Lotus Petal is black mana. Okay, no, I, I see a path forward here. So this is black. This is black. Dismember the DRC. Take that out of play. And then we walking Ballista and kill the Delver. And then I'm still alive. This is on Golem, not Construct. They probably want to do this without tapping Ancient Tomb. I think means this. Walking Ballista for two around a daze. And if this resolves, I can equip Shadow Spear. Fuck. Okay, so. Now life got harder. Now I need to do this, untap the one ring, and draw hotter than the sun. I get to draw four. <laughs> okay, uh, is that good enough? I can kill that fucking Delver. Um, that's not good enough though, right? Because the one ring kills me, so I have to keep going. I can draw five cards. I lose one Lotus Petal to do this. There's one Lotus Petal remaining in the deck. Uh, okay. Uh, not dead yet. Keep this Mox Opal. One mana, Manifold Key, draw six. Uh, things are starting to get a little dicey, though. I'm running out of initial mana sources. Uh, Mox Opal is an initial mana source, but I think this is the point where I bottom out. I can play another thing, but I don't have the mana to activate it. Yeah, we made a valiant effort. We just fell a little bit behind there. Uh, great game. All right, I have kept a little bit of a medium hand here in terms of raw speed. I think it's an okay hand overall in terms of power level. We'll put this on Golem for Lodestone a little bit later and pass the turn. And then we can just do, like, turn two, Grim Monolith, play Urza's Saga, and start working towards, like, Saga getting a key to do Grim Monolith nonsense, and then one ring nonsense. Sapphire Medallion. Uh, so we want to get Lodestone Golem into play ASAP to counteract that, uh, which it looks like we can now just do this turn. So we'll cast both of our free spells. And then Grim Monolith. This turns on Metalcraft for Mox Opal. Oh, and it might have a counterspell. They're pausing here. Uh, it's in play. We will be attempting Lodestone Golem. I, I think it is just important to try. And if I get Force... Oh, no, I did not get Force of Will and Blue Card. Uh, cool. So we have negated one of my opponent's important plays. My opponent is potentially something in, like, the High Tide, Mono Blue, Storm, Ballpark. I'm not exactly sure what they are doing. I'm fine playing another one of these immediately. I always attack for the five. How big is a Construct token that I make? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven plus five is not lethal. I think if it's not lethal, I just play the One Ring and just get protection from everything and make it so that I don't accidentally get brain freezed and die. All right, it sat on the stack for a long time before it resolved. I am unsure whether or not I am supposed to draw immediately to play out extra artifacts or whether I am supposed to wait and pass the turn for some sort of potential old breacher uh, days undoing style nonsense. Sapphire Medallion is not a commonly played card. All right, so now my opponent actually has cost reduction. They don't have many cards in hand, though. Sure. I'll take some damage here. One of these ticks up and gains this ability. Let's make a Construct token. 
I guess I have to keep in mind that Hull Breacher is currently castable. Got key. I just have lethal on board. I don't need to play all that much more stuff. So this is one, two, three, four. I'm gonna just play a new copy of the one ring. I get a manifold key. Play a land. I think go to combat and attack, and if my opponent puts a like hull breacher on the stack, I can respond by drawing cards. Alright, my opponent's at nine. So I'm gonna take some damage, manifold key. Untap Grim Monolith. And I think cast a one ring without drawing a card or two cards. I'll mox a full first. Keep that one. Cast a new copy of the one ring. Keep this one. Pass turn. Easily have lethal damage. Alright, it is a high tide variant. I have protection from everything right now. Sure. Spell seeker. Snaps this construct token. So snaps the spellseeker, sure. So they can repeat that a couple of times to build storm. And I'll just jump to when something new happens. So the fourth snap has now happened. So spellseeker has to get something new this time. Uh, it's just a ponder. Uh, sure. Mana is never going to be the bottleneck here. It is always going to be just raw cards. Mind's desire. Yeah, you got it. Can't auto yield to these. I don't want to draw my one card with the one ring or make my Urza Saga construct token yet. All right, so my opponent's got a bunch of stuff that they can work with, but I still don't understand how they can win. They can't brain freeze me. They can't blue sun me. They would need like something like a Thassa's Oracle. You got it. I'm gonna update at relevant spells. I I just don't see how my opponent does anything meaningful here. They're playing towards something, but I. I don't know what, unless it's Thassa's Oracle. Uh, there is a Jace Wielder of Mysteries, so that is how my opponent can win through protection from everything. Alright, so I was slightly off with it being Thassa's Oracle, but there is a win condition here. Alright, so my opponent casts the Jace, and then draws a card, and they win this one. Um, that's pretty unfortunate. Uh, Trinisphere is great. Dismember is actually pretty reasonable versus Snap. And Leyline of the Void and Torment's Crypt are not, like, totally crazy because they mess with my opponent's graveyard, and part of what my opponent does is only possible because of the, like, snap-type nonsense. I think I'll play Torment's Crypt for Metalcraft reasons and not play Leyline. I don't care about Wormcoil Engine. I really just want to kill my opponent with Urza Saga Construct Tokens. Feels like Forge Master is too slow, like everything has to line up so well in order for that to be relevant. I would need three more cuts from here. I think I like Walking Ballista, it can pick off like Cloud of Fairies and Spellseekers. Probably go down on one or more Paradox Engines. Shadow Spear's not very relevant. Shave one Metalworker? Metalworker's kind of interesting in this matchup because some portion of the time my opponent does a draw seven. Sacrifice Crystal Grain, play Grim Monolith, play Tormaz Crypt and Mox Opal, cast the One Ring on turn one. Uh, it's a little YOLO, but I think I like it. Let's play some artifacts. Seems like my opponent doesn't have a counterspell. I think they're currently f 6 So we jam the One Ring. I think I'll just draw immediately. Nice. And I'm very likely to like find a land or something that allows me to play this or another piece of artifact mana. Uh, metal worker. You're a construct. I can't actually Trinisphere this turn. I only have two mana. This is the upside and the downside of Crystal Vein, right? Metal worker is going to make so, so incredible much, like, insane amounts of mana. All right, opponent's doing something. Okay. Well, what you got? Sure. Sure. Okay. Well, this is impressive. Sure. 16 mana. So their last card needs to be a business card here, and it presumably is because they're attempting to go off. That is a time spiral. And my opponent did not tap their lands. My hand is much worse than it was a second ago. Sure. All right. 
guess I could have Tormod's Cryptid. Uh, yeah. Sure. My hand's not good again. Let's see if I even still have this hand in a minute. Sure. That kind of stings. Sure. At this point, I probably lose. Now I'm kind of in this miserable position where I can't really concede because if my opponent draws me into a dismember, I can potentially just unstap, uh, stop them from untapping their lands. But nothing... I Otherwise, I have no real interaction here. So I'm going to give you relevant updates. Actually, you know what? With a Force of Will and a Force of Negation in Exile, I think I'm just going to value my time and leave. I, I think I'm done here. All right, the last time I played this player, I turn one Rhino'd them. Uh, this time it's not going to be that savage. Um, we're doing this, though. And then I'll dump both artifacts into play. And we're probably just going to go City, do Urza Saga nonsense. And then if the game goes on, we can uh, Forge Master from here. Ooh, uh, so my opponent is potentially playing the Cascade deck. So my Lodestone Golem is very good. I can't do it this turn. This is, or no, I can if I City. Sure. So this is just more important than making a construct token. This also could be some sort of like mono red sneak attack deck, um, although that sort of thing is pretty rare. Yeah, it is. It is looking like the Cascade deck. So let's make large creatures. Metalcraft is on Shadow Spears. Pretty good. Let's just do that. Put this on Construct. It's not going to be super relevant because I'm not ever going to cast this Forge Master. I am purely just going to attack for 6 damage this turn and then 12 damage next turn. That's the theoretical plan. And we just hope that I've run my opponent over. And we can bring in Trinospheres for the post sideboard games. All right. Do this. Lay out some keys to increase the amount of damage that I do here. So this is 12 damage, putting my opponent to 2 and making either one of these creatures lethal next turn. Let's see if my opponent has anything to say about that. They've got enough mana to try. So this is 8 mana. They can cast like a 6 mana enabler, like a creative technique. And they do demonstrate. So I get the first thing here. This is non-artifact, right? Yeah. So I will cast this. And now my opponent gets two more spells. They've gotten an Apex Devastator, which is a pretty good spell. That's a 10-10 creature. Imagine that. Oh no. They, they paid for Violent Outburst, meaning that they cast that. So they are not going to get to cast another spell. I believe that this has uh, left my opponent deterministically dead. So like the stack clears, this resolves, this happens. And my opponent would have gotten a call forth the Tempest, which, yeah, my opponent says, think I win this one if I don't mess up. I, I agree. Or at least have a very, very good chance at winning. They do have to remove both of my creatures, though, because I can just, like, make one unblockable. Grinosphere. Fantastic. Everything else I probably don't care about. I might play Tormod's Crypt just to better enable Metalcraft and Construct Size early on. There is something to be said about leaving these giant monsters in my deck to just randomly hit with their copies of Creative Technique. What is not good? So Lodestone Golem and Trinosphere are the two things that really matter for me. Paradox Engine is interesting. I don't know, I guess if my opponent is flipping, I don't so much care about this stuff. Like, I care about hitting Lodestones and Trinospheres. This gives me a like haste way to win the game if I'm popping off with Paradox Engine. I, I think I'm just going to get rid of this stuff, though, and just legit play. Tormod's Crypt for Metalcraft and Urza Saga Construct size. 
I have a lodestone golem. I can play it on turn two. I'm in. My opponent did keep their seven. They do have some lines that... Oh. Cavern, Petal, Petal, Grim Monolith, Lodestone Golem on turn one? Yep. Uh, I'm going to put this on Construct then. I have more Constructs than Golems. So, Petal, Monolith, Petal, Golem Friend. Yeah, we're in play. Now I'm just hoping for a key would be ideal. Any land drop is also fine. A Grim Monolith is perfectly fine, so we'll do this. I guess attack for my 5 now. When it goes to 15, I'll play out Grim Monolith and pass the turn. I can use this to make an Urza Saga Construct token next turn and play Shadow Spear, or alternatively get the One Ring going if I think that's better. Um, we'll just kind of see based on the draw. I, in theory, would love to find additional things to do here. So let's play the One Ring. Draw some cards. Yeah. I'll bash in with my creature. Opponent's at 10, and I have lethal on board. So my opponent needs to attempt to do the thing, I think, right now. Or alternatively do some sort of cute violent outburst thing on my turn. I don't take damage from Ancient Tomb here to do this. Uh, this is 10. Lose some. Paradox Engine. I'll draw my cards right now. So I can go 1, 2, 3, 4, Mox Opal, 5. Or I can get a key. Yeah, I think this is better as mana. It is not showing that I have floating mana here. I'm going to assume that I have that floating mana. I'm going to get a Manifold Key. We'll do Ancient Tomb. We're going to cast Paradox Engine. And we are just going to try to pop off harder before combat. I'm going to Manifold Key, untap Grim Monolith. Then I get to untap all of this stuff, including the One Ring. And I can just like continue to cast spells before combat even happens. Ooh, yeah. So... Opponent could not put something on the stack to Tybalt's trickery and kind of get going here. Uh, GG's. Okay, um, and to keep. I am confident in that much. We'll figure everything else out when it gets to my turn. I'm probably going to end up just shoving a turn one Grim Monolith. Or... So how quickly do I want to play this Urza Saga? I almost want to give my opponent a chance to Wasteland Ancient Tomb. Before I do anything else here. So I think I'm going to do this so I can play around days. And cast this Grim Monolith. Like, if this works, cool. I can play the one ring around days. And if it doesn't, not that big of a deal either. So my opponent did have the Force of Will. There was the days. So my opponent let me have Grim Monolith. And we'll see if they regret that later on. Because, like, now every key is just an incredibly powerful card. Also, I just like have a Worm Coil Engine that I might hard cast in the not too distant future. All right, my opponent troll cycles after not flipping Delver. Hey, you know what's not getting wastelanded? My Urza Saga. I feel smart. 17. So now we're fine, just like playing Urza Saga and working towards Shadow Spear. I do have some other possible lines where I could, like, untap Grim Monolith, but I don't really think those lines are good. Oh, come on. That's awfully rude. 16. Forge Master. Okay. Um, this is fine. Telfer refuses to flip. I think we have been luckier than our opponent. Like, their, their double wasteland is obviously very good here, but... Like, they have two Underground Seas of their four cards in hand. I'll take one. Go to 15. A Reanimate is very good. All right. We know what must be done. Cast Grim Monolith, six mana, Worm Coil Engine. Please don't let the one unknown card be a Daze. I know there's an Underground Sea in hand, so it has to be Daze. Nice. So now we probably end up out-damaging our opponent and winning the race. We'll see what they uh, can come up with. They can trade the 
troll with worm coil if they hold the troll uh if they hold the troll back and then they can still just keep hitting me for three a turn with the delver but i'll have a lifelink token that they'll have to answer beyond that they are not um i guess my opponent could like bounce the worm coil engine with something like a brazen borrower and that would be rough let's find out send it yeah that does it one, two, three, four. I have no outs to the troll. Uh, that is unfortunate. Tarmot script will probably come in. It has some utility versus reanimate here. Dismembers and defense grids and trinospheres are all things that I can think about. I have not managed to forge master ever. So I don't know to what extent I should be leaving them in to tutor for warm coil. It's been kind of a weird league in that everyone has just died to Urza Saga and Lodestone Golem. Yeah, I don't I don't think I want the five drop versus days. I think I'm gonna keep Warm Coil. Armor's Crypt helps with Metalcraft. Defense Grid might make sense on the play. Maybe I don't dismember. Trim a metal worker and a paradox engine? Yep. So the real question is like, am I playing Defense Grid on turn one or on turn t uh off Urza Saga or not. If I wait, Ancient Tomb is more likely to be Wastelanded, which matters. So I think I am going to Ancient Tomb, Defense Grid, Force Pitching Ponder, and I'm going to play out both of my artifacts in respect of cards like Grief that attack my hand, and hopefully just run away with the game with an Urza Saga. All right, there we go. That's what we're trying to do, is play around that exact thing. Paradox Engine can maybe be good later. All right, that doesn't cast cantrips. Lightning Greaves. That's not bad. Okay. I think I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice this land, make a Construct token. That turns on Metalcraft. I don't have to worry about days right now, because this isn't an island. Equip here. Got a shroudy creature. Oh, maybe this was bad. Because I can't make my next construct now that I sacrificed that lotus puddle. Maybe it should have just been City of Traders. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Sure. Float mana. I just wanted the City of Traders for a prolonged period of time. Shadow Spear is good. I ha oh, I have Shroud, not Hexproof, though. Uh, yeah, let's just get a Tormod script then. So, play land, play Manifold Key with the floating mana. I've got a 5 power Shroudy creature, but it's chump blockable. It's not really chump blockable anymore as soon as I get another creature. But I, th I think I made my things awkward for myself by not playing the City of Traders and getting the extra Construct token. Like, that might have lost me this game. 17. I, I think I just got in my had too much about wanting to keep this city. I want this Paradox Engine out of my hand. Send it. This is Bowmasters for a chump block. Not even sure if I play this Urza Saga. I don't have guaranteed mana to activate it once I lose this. I think I'm going to hold if Delver flips to Brainstorm. That's fine. Bowmaster. Oh, no. It just means my opponent's got another creature they're going to block with. Okay, no, they changed their mind. Yeah, sure. I'll go to 13. Um, Narset is kind of annoying, but it's not like I can really cast a copy of the One Ring anyway. It's more annoying in that it's a bunch of chump blockers, potentially. A Dismember. That's almost a good card. Metal Worker. Like, I'll play that for sure. I'll, in fact, play it around a daze. So this, in theory, grows my Construct by one. Fantastic. So now, move Lightning Greaves to Metal Worker. I will reveal Paradox Engine. I will get two mana, three mana. My Construct creature cannot be blocked this turn. Lightning Greaves goes back over here. So now the question is, do I actually kill the Narset, or do I go six at my opponent's face? I think I kill this. I, I think I am just going to bury my opponent with 
Urza Saga here. Yeah, all, all the mana that is spent not immediately impacting the board is good for me. My opponent can dismember the Metalworker so that I can't necessarily activate Urza Saga. I think if I activate the Urza Saga, I just win. I, like, move the Lightning Greaves to this creature. See if my opponent sees that. It's kind of a weird thing. I'm at 10. Okay, my opponent does not see it. So activate. Get 4 mana. Activate. This is a 7-7. Seven, seven. Lightning Greaves. Get moved over here. So both can attack. My opponent can dismember right now if they would like. Okay, they are going to drown it in the lock. So that's good. That occurs. So I know that my opponent has a dismember. I can move Lightning Greaves here and make it so that I can make my creature unblockable, but then I'm attacking with a smaller creature. I think I'm just going to take their Bowmasters out of play. Let's play a new Metal Worker. Lightning Greaves this for two minutes. Yeah, I'm just going to take the Bowmasters out of play and be fine with presenting the same Urza Saga activation line next turn because Dismember doesn't really beat that. Sure, sure. My opponent can surveil. Oh, um, I messed up. I could have uh, effectively countered that with Tormod's Crypt, I suppose. Oops. So focused on keeping a troll out of play. I didn't realize that I could have other utility. I wasn't super expecting Drown in the Lock. I don't know, maybe the artifact count matters a lot. Because, like, I Dismember is a known card specifically. Delver's still attacking. All right. So, Metal Worker, gain four mana, use two of that, make an Urza Saga Construct token. This time I will find a Shadow Spear. Metal Worker, get some more mana. I think it's fine to just cast this. Doesn't seem like this is likely to get countered in this spot. So, there's two mana. Cast a Tormod's Crypt. Untap all of these things. Lightning Greaves over to this Construct token. Dismember on that. That's fine. So now, this isn't just lethal on its own. This is lethal. I think I still make this one unblockable. Yeah, I think we're going for unblockable. All right, cool. Um, that was sort of an elaborate dance. So now when I'm on the draw, I can think about whether or not I want to dismember. My Paradox Engine like didn't really do anything, and it's also just harder on the draw. I think I'm going to get rid of those. And again, we're looking to just win with a decently sized Urza Saga token that has lifelink most of the time. Maybe I should also Trinosphere, but I'm having a little bit of trouble figuring out like what it is that I would actually cut if I did that. Uh, this is a very volatile hand that I'm looking at. Two mana, three mana, four mana, Lodestone on turn one. Metalworker is not great. If my initial Ancient Tomb gets wastelanded or if anything gets dazed. I, I, I think this hand trips over itself and dies too much of the time. Like, Lightning Bolt or two mana is devastating. Daze on this is devastating. I think this is worse than a hand that has an Urza Saga. Five card Urza Saga hand. Keep Arino. Warm Coil's not realistic with this hand. I think we're all in on this, these five. Wasteland is good. That's what I have to say about this hand. Uh, we're gonna hope that I can make at least one construct token. Um Am I okay taking a turn off to offer Ancient Tomb to Wasteland instead? I think I am. This potentially makes some of my top decks over the next couple of turns much stronger. I th think I stop there. No Wasteland. Eh. I get punished for not playing out the Mox Opal potentially if my opponent reanimates this. The Shadow Spear is obviously the good card in the hand. Yeah, I do get punished for playing it out. I was keeping it in hand in respect of maybe drawing a... Metal Worker into another reasonable magic card. Boy, do I have mana, though. I also have unblockable construct tokens, 
but this is gone. Let's see if the Delver naturally flips. It's kind of a big deal. Ooh, that's a really good brainstorm. That's a really, really good brainstorm. Two fatal push. Ooh, this is lining up really well for my opponent. I think I'm dead. The Shadow Spear being in my graveyard is rough. I don't know, maybe I can draw the one ring and do some absolute nonsense. Ooh, -hoo -hoo. yikes. Do I do this? Ugh. Actually, is killing the Delver better? I can eventually block a Grief. I can never block a Delver. So this brings me to eight. My tokens are just covered. And uh, no Surveil Land. <clears throat> I'm at five. Oh, Shadow Spear. Oh, Shadow Spear. Untap Grim Monolith. Make my token. Eh, that's not what I'm looking for. So we'll three mana. I will make my construct that is doomed for death. My opponent should crack here to play around Pithing Needle, which they do. So I probably need Mox Opal here to work towards being able to cast a Dismember next turn if I get exceptionally lucky. So uh, if I had played out the Mox Opal earlier, I could have a Lotus Petal here and I could be resenting, uh, representing Black Black. Um, that does not end up mattering here. I am dead. And we put two wins on the board in this league. So overall thoughts on the deck list we played today. It was fine. I, I think what David submitted was pretty reasonable, and I think I made it a bit faster and tuned it up. The issue is that, like, Metalworker is just so slow by legacy standards, and so is Koldolfa Forge Master. Like, there is a tier one, or very close to it, like, Grim Monolith, One Ring, Bunch of Keys, deck lists, and it just completely goes under everything that Metalworker is doing. And Forge Master was something that I didn't sideboard out every round, but sideboarded out in most of the rounds. The artifacts that I'm sacrificing, generally speaking, are pretty damn good. And so giving up three of them is often not worth it unless it instantly wins the game, which it can with Lightning Greaves, or maybe sometimes with Paradox Engine just popping off. Maybe I did not value this card highly enough in this league, but the cards that won me matches were the cards and the strategies that are normally being played in Legacy. And the fact that Metalworker is slow requires artifacts in hand and dies to many commonly played removal spells such as Lightning Bolt is a lot of strikes against it. So while I think it is possible to play a Mud-style decklist, I, I think you've just got to go with the power creep and you have to kind of do the deck in the direction that it is trending now. We got some Metalworker activations that were relevant, but the Metalworker activations were more like funneling mana into Urza Saga than casting like the Steel Hellkites and Forge Masters and Blight Steels and Worm Coils that Metalworker used to power out. Yeah, I, I think that's what I've got to say here. Like, we, we definitely had some of the vibes of old school mud, but Metalworker has seen better days. And even with new art, I don't think the card gets there anymore. But again, should you need any of these sweet artifacts, check out toamagic.com and use promo code THRABENU to save a little bit on your order. And folks, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. See ya!